The only good thing about being diagnosed so late in life is Hey, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. In this blind story time, we're going to focus on family. I'm sharing with you today how my family has responded to my visual impairment journey from the day I was diagnosed to present day. And hey, if I don't say your name, fam, know that I can't say everyone's name. I love you all the same. For the sake of time, we're going to keep this short and sweet. I don't want anyone calling me being like, remember when I held you when you were a baby? No. <laughs> so let's get into this. I hope you enjoy. If you did, hit the like button and let's get in. Where should we begin? The beginning? No, let's begin before the beginning. So way, way back in the day, I was seven or eight, and that's when I first noticed something was wrong with my eye. One eye in particular, the left eye. When I went to the doctor years later, we realized that the left eye is so lazy that the right overcompensates. So at one point, I actually had better than 2020 vision one eye. I can't believe that now sitting at more than 2400, but let me not get ahead of myself. As a kid, I noticed something was wrong with one eye. Told my parents, they said I was looking for attention. So when I was a preteen, I told my great grandma and she acted real quick. She called up my auntie Amanda who scheduled an appointment and we got my first two pair of glasses. There the doctor found out, like I said, I got a lazy eye, but also that I was nearsighted. Nothing to do with life legally blind. They didn't know there was an eye disease. I don't know how they would have been able to detect it back then, but it was just, I was just a regular kid who happened to be nearsighted with a little bit of a lazy left eye. I remember wearing these glasses every single day, hating my life because I was super insecure. And I also had to put a patch masking tape up the right eye every night for at least an hour to strengthen the left eye. It was horrible, horrible. But I did that religiously for three years and then I eventually stopped wearing glasses altogether because it worked miracles. It was like an exercise for my left eye and it was strong enough that I didn't need to wear glasses at all. So I didn't for years until I was about 19 years old in uni, struggling and straining to see the whiteboard. I said, I pay too much for these classes. I need to get this corrected. But I was still hesitant, still super self-conscious. And I was just getting my braces off, so I was not about wearing both because I know glasses are trendy today, but back in the day, that wasn't it. So I hesitated, and it wasn't until I failed my G2 twice, and I said, is this a sign? And then my cousin, who's three years older than me, and I looked up to her, got herself a pair of glasses. I thought, hey, if Sasha can get glasses and she's one of the prettiest people on the planet, then I should care more about what I see than what I look like. So I got myself situated, went to Walmart, because that was the cheapest place I could go to, and I got an eye exam. They gave me some contacts, and they also referred me to a specialist. As you know, the story goes, the first specialist dropped the term Stargardt's disease. I got my doctor Google on when I went home, read up what it was, thought, mm, that's not me. It's very unlikely, using my grade 11 biology, that my mom and my dad just happened to have this recessive gene, but we know how that story goes. For the first year of my 20s, I spent so much time going from specialist to specialist, doing different tests, getting dye injected, getting blood drawn, getting light shone in my eyes. It was horrible. I didn't have anyone to relate to. By the time I was was 21 and officially diagnosed I kind of closed off I said if this is it 2040 I can handle it I'm not going to think about it getting worse because it's very unlikely I just convinced myself that this would never get as bad as it did that same year I took a trip during reading week to Philly to visit two of my cousins Danessa and Duena I remember one time they sat down with me Danessa's kneeling looking up at me I'm so proud of you girl you're doing all of this and you're losing your vision you're so strong and Duena's like yeah I'm so proud of you I can't believe you're managing your YouTube you're finishing up school you dress well you work multiple jobs you take care of yourself the whole time because I had never gotten that response before I didn't know what to do with it and besides I hadn't even fully accepted what was happening to me I didn't realize that those two cousins saw in me what I didn't even see it myself in the time the strength that would be required to get through this period of my life 25 was really hard I had this high expectation that 25 would be the best year of my life I always looked forward to being 25 and that's when I experienced the most vision loss in the shortest amount of time. I hit rock bottom real quick and I felt like there was no one around me to relate to. I felt very alone and isolated. I just, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I remember talking to my auntie Amanda and saying I was mad at God and she's like, wow, you've really lost your way. And that was a wake up call to me that I shouldn't be angry at most high because things just happen and it's more about how you deal with it. 
around the same time I was sharing with my dad what I was going through, but not on an emotional level, more in a sterile, like I went to the appointment. They're saying this is my vision. It got worse today. And it just went over his head. It wasn't that he necessarily didn't care. It just, there was no real reaction there. It wasn't until he started experiencing vision loss himself. What's your eye disease called? I've been living with this disease for five, six years, and now you're asking me because you're going through it. I was livid. I kept telling him, there's no way you have this disease because the science, the math isn't mathing. Maybe he did, I don't know. But at the time, I was seeing red. I was so angry because I'm thinking, you're supposed to be my parent. Meanwhile, you only care as it relates to whatever condition. He was never diagnosed. I don't know what he had, but I was so mad because all this time I'm going through all the waves, the emotions, learning how to adapt and adjust. But when I look at it, when I take myself out of the picture, you can't judge your parents because they are people and people are not perfect. I wish I knew that back then. I held such a grudge against him for such a long time and I wasn't as supportive as I should have been during his vision loss journey. He became legally blind in two years and he lost his job and some other things happened. It's not my story to tell, but that was one of the scariest things to see because it wasn't just the vision loss for me. I've said it before that losing your vision is not vision loss itself. It's the loss of your sense of self. And I saw that with my father. He was always this charismatic, energetic person that everyone that knew him loved. He just gave and exuded energy. And as he lost vision, he lost pieces of himself. And it was so sad to see. When he passed away, I promised myself I'd never let my vision consume me in that way. It's still scary because I still have dark days, but I can never go back to the way I felt at 25 and seeing how my dad was going through his vision loss journey and how hard it was for him to lose his job. He would call me and say, I can't see this or I can't do this anymore. I don't know what I'm at. I kept thinking, I'm the kid and why aren't you asking me how I'm managing? I'm working two jobs, I'm doing this. And, uh, and I wish I knew now what I knew then, but that's how life works, right? So if you can learn from my lesson, don't hold a grudge against your family, anyone in your life really, that maybe doesn't relate to you or respond and react the way you deserve to in the moment because maybe they'll come around. I have a hard time some nights where I think about if things would be different for him had I given him the same love that I give people around the planet that I've never met. There's times where I spend hours responding to comments and messages about their disease, whether it's an eye disease or whatever. People message me about everything nowadays. And I didn't give that same courtesy to my dad because I was so mad. I don't regret it because I know my reasons and I won't share all of them today. But it's really hard when you go through a journey and you could have related to someone who would know what you're going through and you create that wall. I hope that that's a lesson for all of you. This light in the mood a little bit, my little brother. I got a seven year head start on him, but sometimes I'm like, wow, he's a whole man. This is insane to me. The story with Trevor is back in the day, sibling rivalry was real, but recently in like the last 10 years, I'm just, he's one of my greatest blessings. Trevor is someone that I can't believe I've cried to him about what it's like to lose vision and he's been able to comfort me. It's crazy because he's supposed to be my baby brother. I'm grateful that I have someone in my life that I can depend on, whether he helps me with groceries, as you see in the vlog, or he listens to me or he checks in. It just means a lot. My stepdad, Craig, is the best for lighting the mood. He always cracks me up. You need someone who's gonna lighten it up because the road can be dark and heavy, okay? Always there to help me see the other side of things. If I call him and I'm struggling with tech or I'm having a hard time or my vision recently got worse and I tell him, he's gonna help me see that I don't need to wa wallow in my sorrow. Like he'll give me the space and he'll be like, oh, I feel so sorry for you, girl. But then he'll also say, what can we do? He's always solution oriented. Do you need a bigger screen? Can you zoom in more? What about this? Oh, I'm always trying to find ways to make life livable. You know, sometimes it gets really hard and difficult. You would never know that because I don't show that that much here on YouTube, but there's a lot of people behind this person that makes all of this possible. Let's talk about aunties and uncles for a little bit. I got a lot, so I can't mention everyone. Uncle Cordell, Uncle Smiley, Auntie Bridget, Auntie Rosalind, Auntie Esther. Just that they care. I know it sounds so simple, but it's just that they care. It really means the world that they'll ask how my vision is doing, how I'm managing, or we'll just talk about regular, regular stuff. The only good thing about being diagnosed so late in life 
is I have a lot of people in my life that knew me before I was visually impaired. So I'm still Alicia to them. I just happen to see a little less and sometimes they forget. So it's good. It's good to be around people that don't know me as the one that maybe trips or needs to remember where the step is or whatever. It's just nice to feel like a whole human again. Cousins, it's the checking in for me. If it wasn't for Dave, Dornally, Danielle, Danny, Gary, the list goes on and on, Jamal. I feel like I'm forgetting a million one because I literally have more than 50 cousins. But so many of my cousins, they just check in randomly to see how I'm doing. And they don't even know this, but most times when they check in, especially in the DMs, hey, how are you doing? I just saw that you posted this. I've had the worst day and I'm, it's not that I'm saving face, but there's certain things on social and there's certain things for real life, right? So sometimes they'll be like, hey, I was just thinking of you or I saw this on the news. Have you heard of this tech or this new treatment or whatever it may be? Or I watched your video just trying to support, you know? I might be having the worst day and they check out on me and it, the whole energy changes. It really means a lot. So I'm so grateful for all of you. That's all I want to share for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, tap the like button, comment down below who's been your most impactful person, whether it's a family member, a friend, a colleague, it could even be a stranger. Sometimes strangers say the sweetest things on the street. Click over here if you want to see some more from Struggling with Star Guards. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.